Would you like to study Spider-Verse and get better at posing at the same time? Then this posing challenge is for you. Let's see if you can handle it. This video is a replay of a live posing challenge I did with students and members of the Rusty Animator Facebook community. If you want to be part of the next live event for free, check out the links in the description below. But for now, you have two choices. Just watch and learn or try the challenge out right now. You're going to create six Spider-Verse poses in five minute intervals. Let's get started. Let me show everybody how to make the image plan if you don't already. So go to view and then you go to import movie. Then you source the movie. Could be any one of these. Uh, source that real quick, see if it even works. Yeah, it should work fine. So you see that it brings up a little movie image plane that you can then scrub through and you can reposition it wherever you want. I recommend if you've already brought in your rig, rescaling it so that you can see it clearly next to your rig and uh, and then probably move it away from your rig so it's not getting in the way. Another thing you can do to before we begin to make things easy is create a layer down here for your reference. You can toggle that to R so that way you don't select it. That way we can just pose, pose all day and not get interrupted by Maya. I've also made a ground plane, which may come in handy for some of these poses. Maybe it'll help you, you know, keep track of where the hands and feet are supposed to go. And what we're going to do, if it wasn't clear already, we're going to go through these images, pose them all out, but we're going to do it on a timer, like a five minute timer for each pose. There's six poses, so it'll take us about 30 minutes to go through each. Three number countdown. Three, two, one. I'm not too familiar with this rig, so it makes it really interesting for me. I'm like, where's the knee? Two, two minutes and 10 seconds. Be more exact. Make sure you're getting the big shapes first.
20 seconds left. Ah. Oh, no. Yeah, it goes by quick, doesn't it? Yeah. So does your day in the studio. Break the rig to get the pose right. Line her up. All right. Let's start the next one. Three, two, one. Make sure you keyframe your pose first. Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminder. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to lose five minutes of work. <laughs> oh, no. Save your Maya. Uh, <laughs> I really love this pose from the movie. These airborne poses it makes me wish I swapped over to FK legs. Now, how often do you use FK in general? As often as possible. I like free animation, free natural looking animation. And FK delivers if you do the rest of your work right. I wonder why we never did this at school. <laughs> never did this at school? Yeah. yeah. I paid like thousands of dollars for no reason. <laughs> no, nobody ever does any of that. My first school was uh, around 100,000 plus, so that uh, maybe that makes you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm in France, to be honest. <laughs> Graduated with a mediocre Denver reel and a lot of debt and no first job. How much time it took you to find your first job? Uh, let's see. Oh, about five years of schooling before I finally put the pieces together. Wow. If I had picked probably the right school at the, you know, off the first go and got the right kind of mentorship and all that and knew exactly what I needed to, to get to learn well and to focus solely on animation and all that, I, I probably would have gotten there in two or two or three years instead.
30 seconds left. <laughs> well, that's that's real frustration there. Uh, like I just broke everything. <sighs> yeah, I don't feel like I'm really happy with this pose. <laughs> this pose deserves better. <laughs> There it is. Save your pose, move on to the next one. I really love Gwen's animation in the movie because it's so precise and like, uh, like a ballerina. Oh. She just has like so much control over the weight. So agile as a character. You are talking about like an animator or who? I'm talking about Gwen, uh, the character in Spider Verse. Oh. It is like the first movie ever that uh, uh, the first time I see the credits, I just want to reset the movie from the start. That's how good it was for me. <laughs> minutes and 39 seconds. It's broken as long as it's it looks good in the camera view, right? You just described animating in general. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever worked with games though? Hmm? I've uh, worked in games, TV, and feature film. <clears throat> And what's the, your favorite and the, the medium? Um, any place that would let me create a lot of character and entertainment, I would have to say. Like the more personality, the better. Yeah, the more involvement with story and character, the better. VFX didn't make me really love body mechanics though. Nine seconds, one minute left. Uh, 
Chicken's ready. <laughs> Maybe the pizza's here. <laughs> All right, next pose. Let me start the timer. That's why I, I just need a button to do that, and that would be really helpful. You can also just select all the controls like I just did, and then zero out all the translates and rotates. Yeah, I mean, ideally, if you were in a studio and you were working on your shot, you probably would start setting up custom selection sets for all your, your character rigs. See the ballerina ness and the fact that she's like on her tiptoe. minutes and 30 seconds.
you haven't, make sure you're checking your pose from all angles. Trying to add a nice line of action from all angles. Give you some extra depth. In general, I like how quiet it is. The animation is concentration. One minute and 28 seconds.
minute left. Time's up. All good, stamp your key. Take a play blast if you want to critique and upload it to Sync Sketch. Like, as, as I'm going through all these critiques for everybody, see if anything stands out to you from when you were posing of things that you didn't think of, things that you didn't notice, or how you might approach posing your character differently next time with the fact that you only had five minutes to do it. All of it is supposed to work together to make you uh, get more efficient at posing. So um, anyway, first up, um, I like you got like the same kind of angle going on in the body that's, that's happening in the pose here, Eduardo. Um, what I what we're really missing here is the torso upper half with a bend. It's and tough. the shoulders <laughs> there. And it is tough. And you probably need to take the the cog here and rotate that really extreme forward um, and just uh, get some crazy bend in the back to pull this off if you can. Uh, it's it's going to be a combination of all those controllers together to get it. Uh, I like this knee perspective. It feels like the weight is on that knee um, and it feels like it's pushed back a bit. This ankle bugs me a little bit. See how they're getting that smooth line yeah. through the leg. You want to really just try to continue that with the foot. And uh, regarding the head, it's more tilted down, <laughs> looking more more um, more at the ground. And if you had more time, you could also get in there with the fingers and add some of that stuff. And same deal here. But that was probably just the time limit. As soon as you can figure out the shoulders and getting that upper back more, it also help your arm here to show. You can create more of this right angle instead of what you have here. It's it's really the main the main problem with this pose is that the, the head is blocking all of the body and we don't get to see the line of action through the body. So it creates a lot of foreshortening. So there's some good things about this. We got decent line of action through here. I think this this line right there got super small. I don't know why. And maybe the resolution's low. Um, this little angle in here kills that curve for the body. So I try to fix that <clears throat> anytime I have a pose like that and try to have it blend all the way through the the up to the head and show some of that neck. If you uh, show some of that neck, there's just a tiny little bit there and that head is more, more three quarters than flat on, right? And one of the bigger things besides that curve is the, the supporting hand, the supporting weight. It doesn't feel like there's any weight on the hand because it's so far away from the body and there's no like real bend to that. It's not underneath all this mass. So we really got to tuck that hand in much closer here. 
Uh, it also looks like you might be using some stretch. I'm not sure. Look at the arm looks a little bit long. So IK. <laughs> IK with stretch. Um, yeah. So so one thing you'll note too in this pose is the angle of the shoulders. Yours is more like this. Right. So that's how they're they're getting that arm to be normal, normal size. Uh, is they're they're angling the whole body more to the side, right? And of course, the the legs can be a little bit better, um, <clears throat> but you're closer on on that than the the hand and the angle of the body. Moving on to the next pose, real quick. <laughs> Almost hidden in her face. Uh, okay. Here, uh, yeah, she does this one better. <laughs> here again, though, it's uh, I'm seeing a repeat. Um, focus more on your lines of action through the body. So through here, it runs all the way through a nice curve. Try to get that as much as I can with the spine, so you can use more spine bend, and you could also rotate it towards us a little bit, so we can see some of the back, right? That also helps with the arm because it flows into the arm there. Um, and it reinforces that sh her head is really coming around across where the chest is going in the upper tor torso. So that's really the main thing that's missing here is just getting that twist through here that really opens up into the leg showing towards camera more the more the back leg showing to camera and the bottom legs okay feels like it also feels like the whole character is more flat like like when i look at this the upper half of the body is tilted away and what's closest to camera is the legs. So it feels like your character is flat and it, it doesn't uh, go back in space at all in 3D. So I would also take a look at this, this pose from the front view and take the cog and probably tilt it away from camera. And then you get this feeling that the torso is uh, smaller, it's further away from camera, it gives us more depth. So those are the two big things there. This is a tough pose. Uh, I think you're pretty, pretty successful here. I think the hip is more rotated towards us. And I mean, we're, we're kind of blocking here a little bit. It'd be nice if we could get more of a angle like that through the hip than this straight. Uh, I like that you got the, the, the toe bend in there and she's up on her toes and everything. Um, in general, the hip is about low enough where it needs to be here, but you see how the knee, all this stuff is pretty close together and this knee is much, much lower. So I think yeah. you could probably bring that hip way down in relation to it and keep this leg somewhere around there. Um, so sorting that out will really help you, uh, help you with this pose. And then this foot is much more frontal as well. So those are some the, the big changes I would make to that pose, but uh, looks like you're using a little bit of the shoulder there too. So that's nice to see. A lot of times that's forgotten. I like that you seem like you got the arm fairly hidden as well, just like in this pose. Um, I think this one, like these arms, this arm more in particular could have more of that V shape feeling that you're getting here. Right now, you're kind of getting that, but that's the big stuff. This is so far, I think, your most successful pose. Uh, it's probably because a lot of this is silhouette. Did this, this pose feel easier to you? Uh, by that pose, I learned about zeroing things and T posing back my, my character, so it was easier for me, too. Cool. Good to hear so I, I assume if we do this stuff more often then you guys will get even better like <laughs> <laughs> so
So um, as you can see here, one of the big things that stand out to me is the head. The head's tucked in more here. Uh, it's it's a minor thing, but um, I think you could rotate it in just to make that bend through the body more consistent. And I like I like the high knee there. You got that there. That's good. It'd be nice if we could get the foot further out away to keep the silhouette clean in here because it gets muddled right in there. Um, but yeah, I think you nailed the big stuff. It's pretty solid. The you could we could play around with a twist uh, in the body here. I think it's the chest is more twisted towards the camera and the hip is more twisted away. Um, that's going to give you some subtle differences in, in showing how much uh, of the character's body and, and how this arm feels. Uh, this this probably could be a little bit higher. You could get again more of that head tucked in so you can get more of this shape going on in there. That would really help. That's that's the main win. What what we're really lacking here is. I feel that the body is much more front to camera and you're more sideways. Uh, and maybe it was just that you were animating in camera view to a certain angle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That happens too. Uh, but just keep that in mind for next time. Um, because, um, you know, I'm always going to be comparing the angles. And when I look at this, uh, I really feel like the head could be turned, the face could be turned more towards us. The hips could be, more opened up towards us. Uh, yeah, something along these lines. And then we can see more of that chest as well with the, the cool thing about this is you really, you really feel the right side of the character. You feel that arm opening up and the way that this is, you know, these arms are kind of canceling each other out and not really creating any interest there. So with this shoulder and this extra shape, it feels much different than that arm, even though they're both, you know, going behind him and, and going straight. First thing stands out, this leg. Drop that sucker down by uh, putting it out screen left a little bit. So it'll straighten out and give you more of that feeling. And it'll be more in line, that knee will be more in line with the hip. Right. Um, and then, of course, the, the back got you. It's, it's going to get most of you guys, I think. If we could get that spine, you got a little bit of that spine showing here, which is cool. We just need that curve. Need that curve and need to see that upper back to really get the intensity there. Um, it looks like too that your feet are in different positions, which is good. Like I like the fact that this foot is further back and they're not like on the same plane. Uh, it would have been cool to get some of that angle on the wrist and put the tension is in the is in the fingers and the palm is up in the air. Might have been short on time and trying to get warmed up first with this one. Let's see how it goes. Cool. Uh, most of it's there. Could straighten that head out so that he's really looking at something, see a little bit of that neck. You got a, a pretty decent line of action through the, the back of the character. Use that hip shape control to fix this. Continue that curve. Uh, we're also a little bit more sideways on that bullet. And this hand is flipped towards camera. With a little bit of a bend on that, I can see a little bit of a bend on that elbow right here. Overall, uh, I like that you're, you know, you're, you're, you've bent the torso to be super sideways. That's great. 
I think where we can improve it is to get more of this angle because I think you're a little too sideways. It's almost like straight up and down, right? And they're getting that angle there. It's more like a 45 instead of a 90 degree angle in that torso. Just makes it a little bit more appealing. Anytime uh, you're doing poses and you're getting like these straight, like vertical lines and straight horizontal lines, that's the sign that your pose could probably even be more appealing. There, there is a time to have these kinds of angles, but uh, in poses like these, it's not very common. It feels like that hand is also the closest thing to us. Like it's really coming towards camera. So we could probably bring that out towards camera more and rotate it so that it's facing us. the head more like that and it would be better to continue twisting the body uh, and see some of the back of the character you can see how much of the hips we see here as well this this line really helps us to tell and here we're just getting the side This arm also feels super weak because we don't get that, you know, strong angle with the elbow. And maybe you just ran out of time with a pull vector there. looks like you got the fist in, which is good. Uh, also feels like the, the hand is broken, though, because it's rotated this way. And here, the, the, the top part of the hand is completely turned away from camera. So you really just want to rotate this all the way around and open that up. Uh, I like this one. Could probably get the shoulder in there. And it, that's where also changing the head angle to be uh, a little lower down, like in the, in the Spider-Verse pose, will help the shoulder and the arm. Cool, okay. Uh, she's actually getting that shape in the foot. And we're seeing this kind of angle in the hip. Right now it feels like we're, uh, it feels like this whole hip section could rotate up towards us a little more and you can create more of this curl forward towards camera. Uh, I like that you got the straight leg here and we got the weight over here, that's good. Uh, but if we change that curl in the body, uh, then we could probably get better shapes here. This feels a bit like dislocated and broken from everything. So I think that would, have, that would be your big win for this pose, as well as kind of changing this and rotating this guy a little bit towards us. You got the shoulder involved here, which I like. Um, it's just, we don't see the back in here. So we're getting some different shape. We're seeing a lot of the upper right part of the torso here. And their pose, this gives us a slight different feeling. But this, this is a tough pose, it's challenging. So I think you did pretty good considering, okay. Rotate those hands. We get that gnarly twist in the forearm, and the the hand is. Um, we can see a little bit of the top of the hand there. Tuck this head in a little bit more. Be great at whatever we can do. You know, half of the tension in this pose is the fact that this this knee and the head get so close together. It's like you could you makes it really feel like there's a lot of push and stretch to get this knee up that high into a strong kick. And that's the other thing that's making this feel a little soft right now is I think you can get this leg higher. 
for a little bolder line of action there. And here, you know, we see we got, it looks like it's a locked out leg. You might've run out of time, but give us that little bend there and that flows nice. You can really curl that that upper part of the body. You got you got a decent curl here through the the lower half of the the body, but you can curl the upper a lot more to get them all get that shape just more consistent, so that the whole spine's involved. And it would be great too to then also push these up a little bit higher to make it more intense. It's all about that. Bah! You know, you want to you want to feel the thwack. Did this one confuse you at all with the with the arm here? Like trying to figure out where they are in space and everything? Yeah, a little bit. I got I got confused on, on how the torso was like rotated. Mm. On, especially in Y. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough because he's got all this clothing here. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Uh, I'd say that his hips are a little bit a little I mean you're really close here. You probably go a little bit more this way and just a smidge. And I think for the most part, you got the, the torso right as far as I think he's he's more opened up to this side with the chest. Um, and what we're getting is more more the, sh the, the torso is turned towards us a little bit more. It's a little bit more curled in. And we're getting that shoulder up here with the hand kind of going back away from camera. So that's really what we're missing is just seeing that clear shoulder head like silhouette and then just seeing a little bit of that arm coming back. Uh, right now it feels like your arm is a little bit too close to camera. I think you could push it back in space and I'm not sure if you're using, it's hard for me to tell because I can't spin the character, but I assume it feels like there's not any shoulder use there or it's bent a little bit the wrong way. And the, the, the forearm should be a bit higher. You're almost kind of getting something like this if I was to like just draw the arms connecting without the head in the way. Kind of shoot, you should be creating this shade through there. Uh, and this one will be the really the farthest thing away from camera. Uh, we could turn these legs a little bit more towards camera as well. So he feels just overall, I think a little bit too sideways with the way the arms and legs and, and the hips are positioned. And that's that's the big thing there. Uh, so in general, what we're missing is a little bit of the, seeing more of the side of the torso. I You got the, the upper back in there, that's great. Um, what's happening more with the hips here, I think the hips are going this way and the chest is going that way. And mm -hmm. that's what really lets us see that and see the shoulder there more. Um, I think you're pretty close on the angle that the shoulders have. Um, I think the hips could probably be tilted a little bit more like that if you could get there, which would help you with this leg a little bit more. Uh, it's the big stuff. So I think the chest would rotate a little bit more like this. So we'd see more the front of the shoulder. Uh, overall, it's pretty, pretty good. I think you could continue twisting the hips this way so that we just see more of that leg. I know the, it's tough to, you know, you want to get the proportions as close as you can because that's what makes, help, makes their poses so appealing. Sometimes there's only so much you can do with your rig though if the proportions are vastly different. Um, the the twisting of the chest to be more to the upright will will give you more of this angle too, which will tweak the shoulders to give us the kind of view that we want. And that will help you reach further down with this hand as well. Mm, yeah, but, um, I completely uh, forgot about the shoulders and that pose. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so that, that's huge. And so the shoulders and the chest rotation are two big things you want to focus on then. Okay. So here, another thing that's really helpful for like poses is the relationship between where the hips sit over a foot or not. So that tells you, you could probably get a little bit closer to this foot, I think, to, to just push this angle a little more. Uh, and then I think also the chest is a little bit more this way with the torso leaning more like that. So that you, it, you know, runs all the way up through the arm. Like we talked about. The big, that's the big thing. Pretty close. We got some broken, broken ankle there, <laughs> or, or a sprained ankle. Uh, so <laughs> rotate that guy up. Uh, I noticed a lot of animators actually have like, I, I don't know if this is the case with you, but a lot of animators have uh, reservations about like taking the foot from being flat on the ground and like tilting it at all because you're like, oh, I got there's going to be so much more work in my blocking if I have to roll the foot around. <laughs> uh, okay, so pretty good. I think you can push the curl more. Uh, not sure if you can help this kind of shape. Yeah, I tried it on Maya and I found a little uh, controller that can correct the shape. Where is awesome. it? I think you could push the, the curl more all the way up through the head as well, like I suggested to everybody. Um, and again, uh, quick creating some of that twist in there so that the chest is open to camera as these hips are further away. And that will help you with the shoulder and this arm being a little bit more open up to us. One of these days, I'm going to do 2D animation. <laughs> <laughs> you never did that before? I tried it. Uh, I did basic stuff, but I mean for more advanced things. Uh, cool. So this one's pretty close. I think it's again pushing the intensity so that the body's a little more leaned in. You're getting that curl all the way through. Uh, it feels, you know, it feels more like he's into the pose, like I'm flying. Uh, <laughs> that stuff's subtle, but that's where really we we first feel the emotions, I've seen those shapes, and then that helps you again with that shoulder and getting that that thing in there. Uh, and you could you could uh, also if I hide the drawings you could twist the chest to be open towards us more right now it's just straight in line with the hips. All right, so how did your poses turn out? Or what's one thing that you learned about posing if you didn't do the poses? Leave a comment below and let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Did you enjoy this challenge replay? If so, then subscribe and ring the bell for more videos just like this in the future. And remember, if you want to be part of the next live challenge. Check out the links in the description below. You can join for free. Until next time, feel free to check out some of our other animation videos over here. And happy animating.